That's a good look, I think. It works for me. I just have never seen one of these. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, this week, we're on Kiowa Island, South Carolina, for Cars on Kiowa. This is one of the barrier islands about a half hour out of Charleston, and man, this is a nice place. What a great venue, fabulous day, and there are some cars here, let me tell you. Let's check these babies out. Bruce, wow, what a show. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> it exceeded all expectations, man. Well, it's exceeded mine. What a beautiful venue, Kew Island, my goodness. It is an unusual place. We're at the far uh, eastern end of the island. These beautiful oak trees, wonderful people, uh, and a spectacular day. It is, it's stunning. And you've got, I don't know, I mean, there's gotta be close to 300 cars here. Yeah, we got 300 cars. We got pretty much our capacity. We had a lot of interest in this show this year. and. We love the relaxed nature of it. Yes, it's really yes. wonderful. Well, I like how you've got it laid out. You know, you've got Model A Club, you've got race cars, you know, English, British, French, German, yeah. American. It's really nice because you can kind of travel the world yes. <laughs> from grouping to grouping. It is, and we've got such a wide range of cars, which I think for me personally uh, makes it a ton of fun. You know, yeah. I, I love looking at everything from rat rods to Bentleys and uh, Rolls Royces. Yeah, well, and, and you have all of the aforementioned cars. Yes, I mean, it really is. A, it's an eclectic collection. Now, you guys haven't actually been doing this show that long. This yet. is our third year. Uh -huh. uh, it's grown considerably every year. Well, and again, just a, a stunning venue. Great cars. Beautiful day. Let's get around to check a few of them out before you we have to get too Love busy. To. All right, man, let's do this. All right. Well, Bill, this is really cool and I don't even know what it is. It's in the British section, so it's a British something. What is this? This is uh, called the British Champ Jeep. They built them from 52 to 56. Oh, so it's, it's post-World War II. Post-World, they used the Willis Jeep in World War II, the British. Okay. So when the war was over, they said, we need to make our own Jeep. Yeah, those we things should... are pretty cool. We should do this, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, but we want to make it better. <laughs> to totally British, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Typ good. Typical British. Typical British. So is it is it steel? Yeah. Steel. Wow. You've got a shovel over here. You've got a pickaxe on that side. I mean, you're really kind of loaded for bear, right? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a war vehicle, right? <laughs> right. Windshield folds down. Windshield completely folds down or opens up, whatever you want to do with it. All wheel drive all the time or? No, it's a rear wheel drive when you want. And then you've got a, this lever in here, uh -huh. switches it into four wheel drive. And then how many speed? Uh, five speed forward and you pull this arm backwards and you can go in reverse through all five gears. Five, five gears with yeah. the same shift with the same pattern. The good thing about it is if you need to retreat in a hurry, you've got you just, five <laughs> gears in can, reverse. You can really retreat. Yeah. It uh, has these. Was it a soft top too or? Yeah, no, it's a soft top, but I have the original roof with the doors. It has doors that connect and open and close with windows on the side. Really interesting looking hubs. They, they look functional for some reason. They are, believe it or not. We have a rope I up front. I saw the rope up front. All you do is untie the rope, go find a tree, tie one end on a tree, and wrap it around the hub. And then just and spool you yourself. Spin, you wind yourself out. You wind yourself out of the mud. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty clever. It is clever. <laughs> it is clever. Well, let's go see what powers this baby. What do you say? Okay, sure. Absolutely. All right, this is a Rolls-Royce engine in here. This is a Rolls? Yep. That is one of the wildest looking engines I think I've ever seen. This whole engine is enclosed. This can be submerged underwater. It can drive completely covered the driver, everything, because it has a snorkel. A snorkel that for the intake? Here's the intake over here. Yep. You can snorkel it. Snorkel it up. And, and it's all sealed. All sealed. Everything, so. Intake, everything. So it's a four cylinder? Four cylinder, yep. Wow, I mean, this thing is built to take a licking and keep on ticking, isn't it? This is cool. A 1954. Four. Champ? Yeah. Champ. Austin Champ. Austin Champ. Wow, what a cool ride. <laughs> no, thanks for coming and looking at I it. I love it, man. <laughs>
Wow. I mean, wow. Looks like a blast. All right, throw them the keys now. <laughs> Man, Jim, this is beautiful. <laughs> I saw this car and you know, we're, in the, we're in the race section now and there's some really nice stuff here. And I looked at this and I went, wow, wow, that's beautiful. What, what is that? <laughs> you know, in the 50s, there were some you know, almost one-off cars that were created and that's what this felt like to me. What is this? It is, it is a one-off. Uh, I grew up in the 50s around Marlboro, Maryland and uh, the racing that they did back then and these were the epitome of that era. And they would drive them on the street. Uh, today, you would never get past uh, an inspection <laughs> or, or, or the not even deal close. here. No, not, <laughs> not even, not close. even close. <laughs> so eventually I started my own shop and uh, still had the dream the wife, uh, she had the dream too. She was very much a motorhead, and she actually designed the body full scale. So this is her. This is her this design. Is the, this is a co-production with you guys, basically. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. The uh, nose of the car is a 330 Ferrari. Okay. If you step back and look at the side, it's an Aston Martin, and then it's got C Jag and Lister in the yes, ta tail. Yes, I can see it. that. Yeah. I can see all those things. Yeah. Well, yeah. that even looks like an Aston Martin color. Theirs was greener, yeah. if you will. Later on, she was lucky to have a DB9 and it had the same color on ah. it. <laughs> well, it yeah. is, I mean, it's gorgeous. Is it fiberglass? No, no, it's all aluminum. It's all aluminum. Boy, in the interior, I just love this. It's so clean. Well, her part of our business together was the uh, interiors for uh -huh. antique cars, race cars, airplanes. She lofted the interior through photographs, and that's what she came My up with. My goodness. So what's the running gear? I've got a four nine inch four link with a panhard bar in the back. Uh -huh. We've got a six speed Tremac. It's stunning. Let's have a look at the engine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Man, that opens nice. All oh, aluminum. Yeah. Wow, that, now that's an interesting engine. It's 265 cubic inches. V8? Yep, V8. It's an LT1. Fuel injected. Fuel injected. Centered rods, roller cam, waste spark ignition. Wow. I mean, that must be quite a power plant, actually. Well, it has 200 horsepower. And every yellow cab in the United States got one of these motors. And You're a, kidding me. In a Caprice. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were. That's what they were designed no for. No kidding. Yeah, she is just absolutely stunning. So it's a, a. What year do you call it? Well, we call it a '57 because that what was the kind, era? kind that's, of the era. That's, that's the whole idea. 1957 Aquila, one-off, beautiful car, Jim. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. You're Thank very you for welcome. Wow. Pete, I love these uh, these early Carmen Ghias, and this is like a, a kind of a first generation body style. This is a 1958. It, it is. It's a 1958 uh, Volkswagen made them this way from 1955 up to 1959 in this body style. The differences in this early style: the headlights are a couple inches shorter. They oh, slope so down towards a the farther. front. Uh -huh. The air intakes are a little smaller than what are on the later models. And same with the taillights, uh, uh -huh. they're a little lower on the body, hence the low light name and a little smaller Chevron. And speaking of lower, the whole thing's lower. It is, uh, <laughs> two and a half inch drop spindles in the front, otherwise factory geometry, so it rides really well. But I love the lines on these, they're, they're just really, they're different. I don't know that there's any car that really quite looks like this. They, I, I agree, I'm biased, but to me there's not a bad angle on this no, car. No, I love the roof line on these too, and, and personally, uh, I like the hardtop better than the convertible. I just think it completes the design. Nice interior too. And you've got a lot of interesting little features like the wicker tray the, there under, dash tray, I guess. The parcel tray there was a uh, dealer option that were available on the uh, Beetles as well as the Carmen Ghias. The steering wheel is a two year only item. Just a beautiful steering wheel with the horn ring and then that, you know, the- It's got the Wolfsburg yes. uh, crest there in the middle with the and fox it, on And the it. turn signal is, is uh, levers different for these two years? It, it is. Uh, for the two years, it's got the bend to it, so it contours the oh, steering uh -huh, wheel. It uh -huh. also has a flash to pass. Would the original uh, seats have been this kind of uh, fabric or? The pattern is similar, but these are reproduction covers. Uh -huh. uh, the seat belts were something I've added just for safety. I also yeah. have two small children. I love the body color dash. And, you know, very clean instruments. I mean, those have obviously been restored too, eh? Uh, most of them have. This car originally would have come with a clock, and I've replaced the clock for a, a tachometer. Mm. You know, there's actually a lot of headroom in that too. There is. It's not bad. You don't want to be too tall too for tall. one of these vehicles. <laughs> the seat only goes back so far, but it's not bad once you're in it. So VW, of course, the engine's here. It is. Let's look at it. It's. Uh, this would have been a 1200 originally? That's correct. Original motor. It's not original to the car. 
It's a year later, but otherwise period correct. Uh -huh. Air-cooled, four-cylinder, 36 horsepower at the flywheel. <laughs> you weren't kidding. It is 36. It is 36. You're not going to outrun anybody. A little slow <laughs> off of a start, but once you get it up to speed, it's it's. Once a you get ahead ride. of steam, you know. That, that's right. 58 Carmen Ghia. I love this car. Thanks for bringing it up, Pete. Thanks, Dennis. It's been a pleasure. Well, you know, Ralph, uh, I think what caught my eye about this car was I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> this is a 64 Dodge Custom 880, right? That's correct. I, you know, I missed this car. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these. Most people have not seen it. Everybody thinks it's a Polara or a Dart or a yeah. something else. They don't know what it is. It's got a cool front end. Is that yep. grill all cast? Most of the center part is cast and then the strips along the side are stainless. This windshield is, is really a, a great look. I, it, you know, yep. The way it wraps around and it cants back. This is one of these cars that the more you look oh, yeah. at it, the more you see in it. That's right. And it's simple. It's not a very uh, you know, elaborate car or anything. It, it, it wasn't a high-end car. It was a basic budget car. You know, and it's a it darn just, good looking yeah. budget car. Yeah. And then, you know, even these handles, the, you know, kind of flush mount handle and everything. Right. The, the 60 40 bench, split bench. Right. Classic, classic <laughs> Mopar. Exactly. And I've always loved that era of dash where they sort of kind of set that pod on top. Right. And the most uh, noteworthy thing is the push button transmission. It still has a push button yeah. in 64. That's what everybody loves. Uh, yeah. That's the first thing anybody talks about when they see the car. Is that the original steering wheel? Yes. Because that, yeah. your horn ring's just perfect. Yeah. Was this the color? Yes. This is all original. As original as possible. What this do they is, call it? Do you know what they this, call it? I think this is Roman red metallic. I'm pretty sure that's the correct name for it. I really like the, the tail lights. And yep. they, do they illuminate all the yep. whole? Wow, yeah, yeah, you got all, all like that. It's all nice and flush and flat. This little trunk thing was took me 10 years to find. Really? I, I found one, cost me like $400. For that little doodad. That little doodad, the whole, the whole mechanism, because they're very hard to find, and they're usually all destroyed in the middle here, and I was able to find I one. I gotta believe everything on this car is hard to find. Yeah, yeah, there's not, there's, it's a C body, which is not a common one, you know. 318? 383. 383? Whoa, let's go look at it. Okay. Well, that's a 383, all right. Yeah, this is the original 383. So that's what came with it then. Yeah. The only thing that I changed is I put electronic ignition in it because the uh, points ignition was not very reliable. Kind of pain in the neck. And I went to a four barrel from a two barrel. This was stock two barrel before. Still running a single uh, master cylinder. Yes, that's right. Living it's dangerously, all, aren't yes. you? <laughs> it's all drum brakes all around. No kidding. Yeah, huh? I'd love to upgrade it to disc brakes, but originally it was all drum like sure. it is right now. Like I say, it's just, uh, I didn't recognize it. <laughs> I was like, what is that? Yeah. So it's a 64 Dodge Custom 880. Convertible, that's Convertible. right, exactly. Wow, what right. a cool car. Right. Ralph, thanks for bringing this baby what out. A pleasure, thank you. Oh, man, oh man. Well, Daryl, this has got to be about the cleanest, prettiest 72 Chevy Cheyenne pickup I've ever seen. This thing is showroom. Thank you. You've obviously restored it. How rough was it when you started? Well, it had its issues. If you weigh, if you know GM products and, and the bad issues, it had issues. Did you take it all apart? Every bit of it. They back down to every bolt. Every uh, bolt, every nut. Yes, sir. Was that an original grill or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's the original grill. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. And you've rechromed everything, right? Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Now, th yes, is this all aluminum? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. That's again. It's so straight and so clean. And again, Thank it's you. so long to get it that straight. Yes. That's a lot of hammer and dolly work. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's a great color combo too. What do they call this? This is a medium green. Okay. You know, if you ordered it, it'd be metal green. Meadow. Yes, sir. And then just a pretty much a pure white, it's isn't pure it? Pure white. That's that's what it was. It's pure white. And are those stock wheels too? Yes, sir. The full. That was the best package you could get. What they call full wheel cover. Yeah. She is just really just beautiful. Thank you. Now, here's the thing I find kind of strange about it, though. This green really green interior yes, sir. Olive doesn't, green. doesn't mm -hmm. really match the the meadow green too well well it's that's the way it originally was I no mean, kidding it originally come out that way and so like the the, the wood trim on yes, the sir, door that panels is, that is a shine well, package well it's pretty fancy steering wheel too really i mean well, it's, that's textured. a tilt wheel yes sir a tilt wheel and, yes, and tilt huh yes sir. wow and the embossed uh vinyl yes sir. And, and it came carpeted did they paint the beds Yes, sir. They were painted in 72? They were painted in 72. They started them in about 64 is when they started painting the beds the same color as the truck. All your trim, it's all, I mean, it's just perfect. 
And then yes. back here, you've got the, the wood grain panel. That's also part of the Cheyenne package. It, that's part of the Cheyenne. Just really, really pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Those I appreciate nice. that. Work. Sure do. Let's, let's go see what you got under the hood. What okay, bud. Oh, that pops up nice. Wow. I mean, this thing really is showroom. You put all your markings back and everything? Yes, sir. Before we ever painted, before we ever took any of it down, we had the original pictures of it and they would put it back just like it was. Wow, so it's a 350, I'm assuming? Yes, 354 barrel? 350. I mean, do you even drive it anymore? Because it's just no, so perfect. No, it's, 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 it's not right now. Not yeah. right now. I'm showing it. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, it's, got, it's got 19 miles on it. So I don't <laughs> drive it very much. You know, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think I would either. This has got to be the prettiest Cheyenne I've ever seen. So 1972 Chevy Cheyenne in, yes, sir. in the family since new since new and then brought back to new. yes sir yes. what a truck thank thanks you. for bringing thank it thank you very much man this is a nice show cars on kiwa kiwa island south carolina check this out Hi.